Uh, I want to touch on the subject. Want to get your perspective? Uh, ICE Palantir works with uh, Immigration Customs Enforcement. Um, now they license their software to the government, and the government obviously uses their software in whatever way they want to do. And Palantir has been explicit that look, we give software. We don't have ideological biases towards an administration that uses our software. We may not always agree with what they do, but this is how we do business. And CARP has explicitly said, if you're a military soldier in Iraq and you're wearing the device of a company that is gonna be biased if there's a Republican in president, you're not gonna trust that company with your life. And to protect freedoms, you really need to trust that company. D do you think, so first, what, how do you feel about them actually working with ICE, but, and just like anything the government wants them to do that may be morally not significant to most people? And B, if the company gets bigger and bigger and bigger and it starts getting a lot more media attention, how do you feel the company is going to be portrayed? Because as we know, when companies get bigger, journalists dig up the biggest articles they can find, right? And they put them in the limelight. How do you think Palantir is going to deal with this from an ESG perspective as they get older? So I think right now, when it comes to Palantir and working with ICE and everything else, you know, there are governmental organizations out there within other departments that actually do really well, right? ICE also arrests people coming across the border who are kidnappers, right? Coyotes that are bringing, bringing, um, bringing people here, And that's right? why Palantir was contracted by the Obama administration because someone got killed from ICE. And that was the whole point of bringing Palantir into the Homeland Security's e division in the beginning. Yeah. Exactly. So I think a lot of times Palantir, if it were not for Donald Trump getting elected in 2016, I think a lot of people would never have even really called Palantir out on their ICE issues, yeah, right? I agree. I agree. It's one of those things where you have to remember, Palantir really cut its teeth under, under President Obama. And President Obama, being a really good technocrat, understood that there is a lot of value in bringing amazing software to different parts of the government. You know, no one, no one purchases software with the idea of, I'm going to use this to kill people, or I'm going to do... I'm going to use it to do um, do things that are going to be detrimental to um, other people's lives. But at the end of the day, there are certain mandates that people have to follow, right? And those mandates, if they're violated, guess what? The software is going to help us. One of the things that I I like I'll, I'll tell you is like drones, right? Like Palantir helped in targeting people using the drones, right? Yeah. Their technology goes right into that. But think about it this way. Were it not for that technology helping targeting people, what would happen? What's the alternative? Well, guess what? We'll just drop a bomb and level the entire block. You know, now you have an entire village getting decimated. So there are concepts around technology where it'll let you focus in on things that kind of like lowers um, lowers collateral damage, and that's what Palantir essentially does. Where there are probably good parts about it and probably some negatives of par parts about it, but you can't vilify the tool. You have to vilify the user, right? And the intention of that user. If the intention of the user, um, like the president, like President Trump was to target citizens within the country and start using it to, to use extrajudicial killings and Palantir somehow was you know, um, a co-conspirator in that, then yeah, that's definitely something that we really need to hammer Palantir on, but that's not the case, right? right? It's being utilized by the government to do things, yes, sometimes in a negative way, but also in a positive way too, to help affect positive changes. So I think Palantir does not have to necessarily worry about the moral implications of some of the, some of the um, technologies and who they partner with. Um, like I said, it's one of those things that even Alec Karp says, like, it's it's a thing that really keeps him, keep kept him up at night because yeah. some of the some of the really good engineers left Palantir over their stance. But at the end of the day, if your entire ethos is we're going to be protecting you know Western values, right? We need to make sure that the West is getting the tools that it needs to keep those values. Right. So it's one of those things that I think Palantir has been unfairly kind of hammered um, hammered about, and we'll see what happens. But as as my biggest concern with something like that is that um, top engineering talent tends to lean very liberal, right? And that might be one of those things that detracts people from joining Palantir because they're like, well, I don't necessarily want to work for a company that, you know, that targets, uh, targets, um, targets minorities or targets immigrants, right? right. And that, that's, that's kind of sad because that's not what Palantir does, right? right. You, you, you're looking at the smallest piece of their business to get uh, to cast the widest uh, widest opinion, and that's not necessarily the case. So I think 
Um, that's one of the things that Palantir, and that's why one of the advo- one of the things that I've been advocating is Palantir kind of like split off into like two different companies, like one Gotham and one commercial. Cause I think a lot of times the commercial partners might be more in line with working with them if they didn't have the, the, I would say the moral, um, the moral like stink of working with that part. Cause when you're working with a company, it sucks, you know, yeah. you have to make a decision and you have, you have investors too. So if your investors say, Hey, listen, don't work with Palantir, you know, what are you going to do? even if it's a product that's revolutionary and, and that's coming down, that's happening to um, here in New York city, like New York city. Um, I don't know if you know, but NYPD uses Palantir, the justice, like the, you know, like the whole, um, uh, the law enforcement here. Stuff. Yeah. Law enforcement, they love it. But at the same time, you know, a lot of liberal politicians that say, if I get elected, I'm kicking Palantir out. What are you going to well, do about that? I was reading an article about predictive policing and there's obviously a lot of negatives towards it and it's a, it's a deeper discussion, but they were originally called in by New Orleans Police Department uh, just to implement it. And I was when I was reading the quotes from the mayor of the city, he was like, we've got people killing them, uh, killing each other. He's like, yeah. like, like the, it, it was not about like apprehending individuals for sort of racial ideals or something. It was more so about we have inner city violence that we need tools to stop. And I think I'm forgetting the st- statistic. It's like either from 12 to 18% of murders decreased as a result of implementing Palantir. And I'll put the article in the description so, so people can fact check on yeah. that. But I mean, like, it, it, and this is the nature of ethics in business. It's like, what are the costs and benefits? Because as you said, do you want to kill a village with, with, with a bunch of women and kids die? Or do you want to apprehend a couple of specific people, but that technology has to be at the core center of it? And same thing with predictive policing, same thing with these ideas of stopping inner city violence. These are complicated discussions. And I think it's very yeah. easy to just be like, oh, Google's good, Facebook's good. When in reality, the people that are paying for ads on Facebook, <laughs> I yeah. mean, I could start an ad on Facebook. I've done an ad on Facebook. I could say anything I want within reason and, and put some wild stuff in front of you. And that's more ethical. Mm-hmm. It's like, th- these are hard discussions, but because those things are swept yeah. under the rug and it's under the brand of Meta or Google, yeah. right? It, people don't care. And that's the thing. Like it, one of the things I encourage everyone to do, especially if you think that, you know, a lot of these big tech companies are amazing, especially the social show media ones. Go watch the social dilemma on Netflix. It'll open your eyes to a lot of things. I don't know if, I don't know if you've seen it. I've seen it. But yeah. literally after seeing it, I see that there's huge, huge issues with that. The rate of suicide has gone through the roof with um, young preteen girls. And no one is like, oh, yeah, we need to get rid of TikTok. You know, there's so many people doing God knows what. And it's one of those things that you have to ask yourself, like, am I just a product? Do I want to work with a company where I'm being productized? Right. You know? So I'm not saying that, you know, Google and Facebook and everything are uninvestable or anything right. else, but for the, I would just say, if you have a, if you're using, um, if you, if you have a lot of moral stance against Palantir, because some of the things that they do, especially who they've worked with, then you should evaluate your, that same criteria and use it against your, your investment with Facebook and Google and Microsoft and whoever else is also peddling, well, not Microsoft, but you're, but you're peddling your social media wares and wares with, you know? As Palantir gets bigger, do you think that these uh, concerns morally are going to hinder the, the, like, the growth? Like, is there going to be a major ESG concern if they get, you know, business insider attention? Like, if the stock price goes from 15, you know, now to like 50 in the next eight, seven months or seven, eight months, this stuff's likely going to come up. How do you think they're going to work through these issues? Are they going to put out a tweet saying, hey, like, like what, this is what we do? I think the best thing they could do is just do good works, right? Anyone who, who you have something negative to say about, if they're doing things that are improving and helping the community and you constantly are highlighting that, then that, that takes away from the negative press, right? And that's what I think people, I think that's what they should do. They should highlight their work with the, food, uh, the World Food Program right? Mm. Their response to Hurricane Katrina, their response with uh, Team Rubicon, they need to, COVID, they need to highlight all the good parts, right? Because the minute you keep highlighting the good parts and so many good parts that you have, especially like if you hit them with so much good thing, then that whole ice argument, what are you going to do? You're going to keep saying, oh yeah, they work with ice. They work with ice. Dude, I'm tired of hearing about they work with ice. I get it. You know, they also saved a lot of people's lives. So guess what? I'm sorry. The ice they saved thing, like 3,000 you know. kids from being trafficked as exactly. a result of ice. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. So it, it just comes down to making sure you're highlighting your better parts so that the the parts that are critical about you kind of, I don't want to say get swept under the rug, but get 
get ignored as they should. You know, like right now with Tesla, a lot of people are saying, well, you know what? Tesla uses like all these minerals from c- countries in Africa, right? That, yeah, but what's the alternative? We build a thousand more coal plant. I mean, um, what do you call it? Like oil, we keep using oil for the rest of our lives. You know, like, no, there are- It's a hard question. It, yeah. We agree that the ends are, the the ends justify the means. Like we'd rather- Charlemagne, elect- what is that? Charlemagne? Charlemagne, like um, that said that quote, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah. We, the, the end result of like having electric vehicles and transforming the world, but doing some crappy stuff to get there, it seems to outweigh letting ourselves die into 2050 and use up all the oil in the world. Exactly. So I think it's the same thing with with regards to Palantir and, you know, like where they're going to be, hopefully in the future. Like, I think um, all the productivity improvements, all the savings, and especially because if they're working with Western companies, that means our Western companies will be competitive against the Chinese companies, right? right. Like if you have a company that's based in the US, if their productivity productivity levels are like this and the Chinese companies' productivity levels are like this, who does that benefit? That benefits the West. So right. I would say right now, we have to understand that China and Russia are our adversaries. Anything that we can do to help our corporations become better, more nimbler, you know, more efficient, we should do it. And Palantir goes, that falls right back into what Palantir's mission is. So if it's protecting Western democracy, Western values, that all, that also means protecting Western capitalism. Right. right. So that's right back where it goes again, you know?